Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Wednesday on Quad Radio. It's Wednesday, February 22nd, and today we talk to a sophomore AMA ATV Pro Racer, Mr. Travis Moore, who just completed his first uh, rookie season, I guess. Well, his only rookie season in AMA Pro ATV Racing. We say good afternoon and welcome to what seems like a very busy Travis Moore. We've been uh, uh, playing phone tag all afternoon, it seems like. Oh, yeah, we have, and I appreciate being on here, man. Uh, just out here working, you know, I just chuck wood now. I'm just a woodchucker for a living, so uh, just trying to make it by here. And I apologize about the whole phone tag thing. It was me and you, me and you, but uh, the main thing is we got uh, we got hooked up here, and we, we got on the radio now. That's for sure, buddy. And uh, I know a year ago we were talking with you, and you were chucking wood. It was a little different situation because uh, you had uh, pretty much uh, given up the idea and the hopes of ATV racing altogether. You got a call, and uh, some life breathed into your program. Let's talk a little bit about last uh, season, man. And uh, I know that uh, the rookie season probably didn't go quite as what you'd hoped and planned, but nonetheless, it was a good learning experience, it seems like. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it was a lot of different experience this time last year. I was out of uh, chucking wood, but it was just 100% uh, just for conditioning. So I'm trying to use this for the same way. You know, uh, nobody, anybody that's a motocross rider that wants to do this for a living don't want to have to wake up at uh, 5.15 every morning and head out to the woods and cut down trees for a living. You know, that we definitely want to be on a motocross track. Uh, in Tennessee today, it's 63 degrees. Uh, when I left this morning, couldn't see my track because it was dark, but uh, a buddy of mine told me it was looking mint, and they're out there riding, so it, it makes me want to ride even more. But uh, last year, I don't guess it necessarily went exactly how he wanted to. I feel like I had a lot more to offer, but we just uh, we couldn't get stuff going right there, man. It was one thing after another, and um, you know I could sit here, I guess, and name problems after problem, but uh, I just I, there could have been times I think I could have had my head right, and I could have dug a little deeper, and, and there was times where uh, I put in all I could put, and it seemed like the parts just failed us, so... It was just a, a stressful season, I guess, but uh, I guess that's why it's a rookie season. We got it behind us, and that's the past, and we're just uh, we're looking to move forward and do better things in the inner future. For sure, and obviously things are a little bit different. Like you said, you're working a job this uh, year in comparison to last year. It was just strictly training. Let's talk a little bit about the job you got, your woodchucker. What exactly does that mean, Travis? <laughs> well, I just uh, I run a chainsaw. That's it. I work for a logging crew here out of West Tennessee, and uh I come in every morning and, and I pack my lunch in my back and I, I go in the woods and uh, cut trees down on top of them and, uh, you know, run the skitter a little bit every now and then. But I preferably like to run the chainsaw, so it is a lot better conditioning and uh, kind of keeps me in shape and on my toes. It's not really what I want to be doing. Uh, I can't get away from danger, man. If it ain't motocross racing, that ain't dangerous enough. I, during the off season here, I, I go out here and run a chainsaw and anybody knows, knows logging and timber cutting, it's dangerous as it is. So I guess I'm just... Uh, I'm prone to thrill no matter what it is, I guess. <laughs> I guess I guess you just like the excitement and, and living on the edge, I suppose. <laughs> I guess that's what we could call it. But, yeah, you're right. You know, this time last year, uh, I wasn't working a job. I was I was truly blessed. Uh, I will say that, you know, I, I was blessed to have a dream come true last year. Uh, I thought that racing was over for me. I was just going to kick back and start doing all the normal things. And, uh, you know, I was at a point where I've never been in my life uh it had crossed my mind several times to give up, and uh, I beat myself up for that. Because uh, to me, I, I failed myself at that point. As soon as I thought about giving up, you know, I went ahead and failed myself. I've uh, always been called, I guess what you'd say, an optimist. I've never gave up on anything and never quit. When I put my mind and my heart to it, you know, I go for it. So, um, and, and the, in the occasion, really, you know, and I was able to go racing full time, and I'll never forget it. You know, it was a dream come true for me. and. And uh, everybody that had a part to do with it, they they truly know how much it means. And, and if they don't, you know, I want to give them a big shout out and tell them I was, you know, I was blessed to have that experience, and I'll never forget it. But it uh, it was just a big lesson for me. And uh, even at this year, you know, I am working a job. When last year I was in Florida at this time, but I'm not quitting, and I'm not, I'm not giving up. And uh, you know, that's a fact. I'm, I'm going to be around this. It might not be full time like I want it to be, and it might not be the best and the easiest that I want it to be, but um, anything worth having, man, is worth working for, so I'm just going to keep digging deep into the best I can. I like the optimism a lot, uh, and that is one thing that you're noted for there, Travis, and I'm glad that you, you saw that negativity and kicked that out of your life and, and the thought of quitting. Now, let's fast forward here to 2012. Uh, I realize that uh, things, obviously, haven't gone as well in the off season as they did, say, last year, but uh, you're still positive. You're still looking forward. What does the 2012 season hold for Timor? Well, uh, man, January 1st, you know, when, when we uh, swapped over that uh, that night from 2011 to 2012, uh, 
we uh, I talked to a buddy and we come up with the best solution ever, man. And for me, you know, it's, we're going. It's called the 969 Motorsports 2012 Back to the Basics Tour. And uh, basically, back to the basics, man, is, is getting back involved with my family. Uh, it's getting back involved with what I started this for from the get-go, and that's having fun. Uh, one reason that, that I never wanted to quit this and one reason that I never gave up and that I bugged my pants for and I scratched here and raked yards there and cut limbs there and to be able to go racing because it was fun, man. It was a blast. And, you know, at a point last year, I think I let it get to where it wasn't fun. I was stressed out. I thought that I had to finish so good. I had to do this. I had to do that. And uh, it affected me a lot, man. That right there, uh, I beat myself up. So, I mean, that had a lot to do with uh, how I finished and, and the success I got out of it, man. So this year, I'm just, it's, it's 2012, back to the basics. You know, I'm thanking uh, the good Lord for or for blessing me and keeping me safe all the motos of my life so far and, and all the motos to come and a great loving family and, and friends. And I'm just getting back to having fun, man. So we're not 100% certain what's going down yet. We have a few opportunities, but... uh. Right now, we're just calling it the Back to the Basics tour, man. We're getting back to having fun. That's great, man. And speaking of Back to the Basics, Travis, for those listeners out there in Quad Radio land that really not familiar with uh, T. Moore, Travis Moore here, and uh, the 969 Motorsports team, let's let's tell them a little bit about you, where you come from, how you got involved in ATV motocross, how you progressed, and how you got to where you are now. Well, it, uh, it, it's weird. You know, I'm, I'm from a very small town called McKenzie, Tennessee, Uh and uh, it's in, it's in West Tennessee. There, we're not real far from the Redlands. And uh, you know, I, I lived on a farm my whole life. I've, I've always been what I guess you'd call a country boy. Uh, and I've lived up to it. You know, I was grew up strong and tough. And uh, I was out at a friend's house riding my uh, my dad's four wheel drive fuller. You know, and uh, it was awesome. It was a summer. And my dad let me off work, and I was able to go ride. And uh, you know, still to this day, I believe he'd probably wring my neck. I was hitting jumps and and doing stuff on a hunt and one that, that nobody would do on a 400X or a 300X, you know. Uh, so I was hitting these jumps, and my uncle seen it, and he's like, man, you've, you've got to try racing. You're crazy. You know, you can't be doing this stuff on what you are. Here, boy, put a helmet <laughs> on and, and bar my foot or your dad's going to kill you. And, uh, you know, so that's that's kind of how it started. And uh, I started begging my parents, and they told me absolutely not. You know, we was, back in the day, man, you either rode a horse or walked to wherever you was going. You know, I wasn't allowed to ride the ATV unless my dad was around, and he finally let me, and, uh, you know, I finally started talking them into it, talking them into it, and they said, you know, if you buy one, you know, we'll consider it. So I didn't know, they didn't think I had the dedication, so I started putting money back, I bought one, and then, you know, they finally gave in, said, what the heck, let's try it. And, uh, you know, my parents, they fell in love with it, man. And, and from then on out, we've... Uh, we travel together as a family. We've been very successful as a family. I'm a, an amateur three-time national champion. Uh, we've been through a lot. Uh, without my folks, I definitely couldn't have done what I've done and got to where I'm at. And, uh, you know, so I, I guess that's kind of a short summary there of the Cinderella story, man. It's, it's been a long time coming, and my parents have pushed as far as they can and as hard as they can, and, and now it's time for me to grow up as a man and, and show them I can continue on. They've, uh, I guess they kind of paved the roads for me. It just depends on how long I want the road to run, how how hard I push for this, and how long it continues, you know, to last. Right. And how long? How much involvement do you expect to see out of your family this season? I guess. Man, I expect to see a lot of it. There's nothing else. It's, it's just what I've seen already. You know, uh, my parents have, have made me who I am. They've made me a believer. And, and you know, my dad, he's he's still out there busting his butt. My mom is too. They're gone. Uh, I'm actually I live there at home still. Uh, my parents don't come home, but maybe once or twice every six to eight months, you know. And, uh, you know, so I stay there around the house. I keep things up. I got my shop there. Uh, you know, my dad and my granddad's kind of turned the shop over to me a little bit. So I'm, I'm turning it into a race shop. I got my track there. And uh, so they're still involved just as much as ever. You know, they wasn't as involved as much as last year as I want them to be. And uh, so we're going to get them more involved this year. You know, I'm, if nothing else, they're there, you know, just as much more support and, and over the phone and, and talking to me. But, Instead of last year when I was going to a boss for everything, you know, I'm going to dad and mom for everything, asking them their opinion. What do you think? What, what should be our right steps? Because uh, they got me to where I'm at. You know, they uh, all of us together working their hard got us here where we're at. So I'm asking to get my family back in it more than ever, man, because that's when I'd done my best. That's when I had fun, when I had friends involved and family. And, you know, uh, so, I mean, I think that's what i got to get back to, and, and that's kind of what we're shooting for. Now, how old were you when you started riding your dad's utility ATV? Uh, I was actually about 16 when he first let me ride the first couple times, I guess. You know, so that, that's when it started, about 16-year-old. That was the first time I ever rode one. Wow. Uh, I was driving semis and tractors and running equipment at 
you know, 14, but I wasn't allowed to be on ATV, you know, so I wasn't trusted on one of those, but I could go to a job and run a piece of equipment. <laughs> that, that's pretty funny, actually. Now, so <laughs> with that, uh, obviously around 16, 17, you started racing, I assume? Yeah, actually, my first race was, was right before I turned 18, you know, because that was kind of the thing I threw at my parents. You know, they was, they was totally against it, and, you know, I just, I went to my dad and mom as, as what I would say would be a man, and I this is something I really want to try. You know, and, and I want to do it with y'all. I don't want to do it behind y'all's back. You know, I'm, I'm soon to be 18, and, and I'd much rather do this with y'all than, than how I feel to be behind y'all's back after I turn 18, uh, which is totally how I've not been raised. I've been raised a lot better than that. So I brought it to their attention that, that uh, in the nicest way possible without getting whooped, that I was going <laughs> to do it at least once, and I just wanted their permission, and I wanted them to be there just in case something went wrong. And if there was one thing they didn't like, you know, I would never ask to do it again. And uh, it wasn't but a couple of days later they come back to me and they said that they thought that was really mature and uh, they liked the way I approached it. So they said, what about going and trying one of these? So that's uh, that's kind of when it took off. Wow, that's pretty exciting. Now, how old are you now? I'm 24. I'll be uh, 25 April 30th. Wow. So really, I mean, you look at this, uh, you've got a total of what, maybe going on seven years or so, I guess, there yep. now? Yeah, going on about seven years now. This will be my seventh year racing. Wow, that that's pretty amazing, actually. And to see what you've been able to achieve in that short seven years that that's quite a that's quite an accomplishment there, Travis. So uh, I can see why the dedication is still there, and, and why you still feel that uh, there's more to come. I believe. Yeah, I believe there's a lot more to come. You know, in, in the past seven years, I I guess you could say there's been a lot drilled into my head, literally. Uh, you know, I've never took any riding school. I've never really been taught nothing by nobody. So uh, I think the only help I've really had before I uh, started getting on teams was with Harold Goodman. You know, he helped me back uh, for about a weekend uh, several years back. But up to that point, it was uh, me and my dad going out, trial and error, build a jump, and uh, we tried it. And if it didn't work, I got my head drilled in the ground. Wow. I learned stuff, and normally when you learn it the hard way, you don't forget it. <laughs> I'm sure you've learned a lot then, haven't you? <laughs> I've learned a lot, that's for sure. So, uh, but yeah, I, I guess during the day, man, I just I love the sport. And, uh, you know, after all the injuries and all the heartache and everything you go through, and, and uh, you know, I had a friend ask me the other day that was watching me work out. You know, it was 23 degrees outside. I got off work about 5.30. It was 7 o'clock at night, and, you know, I'm uh, I'm flipping a tire up the road, hitting it with you know, flipping it and hitting it with a sledgehammer. Then I'm going running and and uh, you know, he asked me, he's like, man, what what pushes you to do this? You know, your body's been beat up so much. You you know, physically, mentally, and, and financially, you've been just beat and tore and ripped, and and you won't quit for nothing. And he's like, I I just wish I had this driver. I wish I could feel what you feel to keep going for this. And and I don't, still don't know that I have the answer for him, but it's just uh, something I can truly say I know I love. That's awesome, dude. And uh, looking ahead again to this summer, uh, some AMA ATV motocross is in your future. Anything else that you're looking at doing? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a very big possibility at this point. You know, I was at the Indy show this past weekend, and, uh, you know, I had a lot of positive feedback from people. I actually had way more people than I figured approach me, you know, about things. So, you know, that made me feel awesome. made me feel wanted. Uh, it made me feel accomplished that I had people approaching me instead of me approaching them. But, um uh, you know, there's a huge, huge possibility. It's it's probably ninety uh, percent done that I that I will be up in the New England ATV series racing this year. Uh, like I said I'm I'm probably going to be committed to to do twelve rounds and uh, possibly do some dirt track racing this year. You know, there's about six rounds I believe uh, the New England ATV series they're doing about six rounds up there, and and I want to make it to about three or four nationals. You know, and uh, possibly going back out to France to do the twelve hour pond review this year too. So. You know, I still got some real exciting things going on. Uh, when when I say it, things ain't going the way I want to. I'm not in Florida right now, and I don't have a full ride. Uh, you know, I don't have a full back factory ride into the pro class this year for all the rounds of the nationals. So when I say they ain't going the way I want them to, it, it's just because I don't have the best spot out there, and I believe that's what I deserve. And uh, you know, I don't plan on quit, quitting. I get the best spot out there, and, and when I get that, I guess we'll have that conversation then. And I'll I still won't be happy, man. I'll be pushing for something else. I'm. I'm never going to quit. I don't think uh, I don't think you can ever get too good or, or or have the best done possible. You know, until I can beat every record out there and until I can be considered the fastest man on four wheels, I don't think you'll ever see me really happy. I like to hear that, man. I like to hear that a lot. Well, Travis, we're running out of time, buddy. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk today. Get back to work, man. Start cutting some trees, all right? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go chuck some wood, and y'all have a good day, bud. All right, thanks a lot. That's Travis Moore. I'm Rodney Tomlin. This is Quad Radio.